Crowdfunded games are a community unto themselves. It's extremely common to see an update on a campaign page or a notice in a related game's Discord channel about another game or games going through crowdfunding campaigns. Once upon a time, I backed a game called Gigasword, a puzzle platformer where part of the puzzle involves being able to move faster, jump higher, grab ledges, and activate certain switches by ditching the big heavy sword for a bit. Through that game's Discord channel, I heard about another game involving a character wielding a giant sword, Mushroom Kid's Big Grass Sword. The impractically large weapon and use of sprites is where the similarities end, at least as far as the demo is concerned. This game takes inspiration from, among other things, getting over it with Bennett Foddy. This is immediately apparent when watching how the sword is wielded and used to drag the Mushroom Kid up and over platforms and obstacles. With the aim of making the game, as they phrased it, challenging but not rage-inducing, the level design includes checkpoints if you hit the spikes too many times and die, areas that lead up and side to side in such a way that you don't lose a ton of progress if you fall, and a glide mechanic, which allows for crossing wider gaps and correcting your flight path in mid-air. That and regenerating health, that's also a thing. After a bird swoops in and takes away the village's town hall and everyone in it, the Mushroom Kid, named Micah, and his grandmother go to a temple to find a weapon called the Blade of Grass and go rescue them. The Blade of Grass gets longer while progressing through the temple, which can make navigating narrow spaces a bit tougher, but reaching and vaulting over certain ledges a bit easier. And let's get this out of the way now. Yes, you get a sword, but there's no combat. If that's disappointing to you, 7 out of 10 doctors say the best way to vent is by joining my Patreon at the highest tier. Also, they may not be real doctors. Control-wise, I didn't have many problems with this. Though I've never played Getting Over It, I didn't really have any trouble getting through this demo after a little experimenting with how the sword physics worked. Then again, that lack of experience also means I couldn't really tell if I was doing something wrong or if the sword wasn't working the way it was supposed to. That was the case when initiating dialogue, as sometimes I would try talking to someone and the sword would just drop to the ground, regardless of where I was trying to point it. That and tutorial prompts would sometimes appear mid-sentence, which was a bit distracting. It's also at this point I should note Mushroom Kid's origin, a game jam. Along the way, it did win a couple nominations and awards, primarily from university-based game expos, and one of them was an award for aesthetics, visuals, sound, storytelling, etc. I can see why this game got that award, at least for the outdoor sections. Inside the temple, though, it tends to suffer from the use and overuse of similar assets and colors over and over and over, as well as solid gray background pieces that look like placeholders, like they needed more time to catch up to other parts around them. Dear Game Developers, Setting your game or part of your game in a dungeon is not an excuse to use the same shade of gray for most of the backgrounds. Oh yeah, speaking of time, I got through the demo in a little under 18 minutes. Roughly 7 minutes of that was spent talking to NPCs. Something I would take back if I could. While the demo starts in a village with plenty of people to talk to, very few of them have anything interesting to say. Some of them don't even seem to have properly working prompts, making them more difficult to speak to without mashing the E key while pacing in front of them. Given the demo's short length and how this is tied to a Kickstarter campaign, everything needs to look, sound, and feel as good as possible and this demo seems like it came out of the oven a little too soon. I don't think I'm alone in that sentiment, because with a relatively modest target of $15,000, Mushroom Kid's Big Grass Sword is still well short of its goal with the deadline closing in. That screenshot of the pledge total was from only four days ago, but it's changed dramatically since I recorded that voiceover. Now with less than a week to go, Mushroom Kid's Big Grass Sword is only about $4,000 away from its goal. That's a jump of about $6,000, but I should note that $3,000 of it is from one guy who backed this game at its highest tier. So while it is more likely that the game will be funded now, the backer to money ratio still leaves some lingering doubts. Not exactly encouraging for... Wait, who are the developers of this again? Team Broke Kids. Huh. How grimly appropriate. 